Hello, welcome to Il Mercado, and this is the uh, sixth week of our, our wine tastings and our wine blog. Tonight we're doing Rieslings, and everybody thinks that, that Riesling is supposed to be the sweet dessert wine. When, if you compare it to residual sugars and other wines, except for maybe the last two that we're drinking, you know, it's closer to Sauvignon Blanc and residual sugar or Pinot Grigio. They're, these are dry wines. I mean, these are super dry with a lot of elements. So versatile, you can pair it with a lighter style dishes or something that has a nice herbal tone to it. So you can really play with it. Sushi, Thai, sushi, Thai. You name it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it goes with a lot of different foods. The first wine we're doing tonight is, is Cooling Galop. It's a QBA. It's a dry Riesling. It has three, three grams. grams of sugar. And then with this one, what you want to remember is that this, the soil that this is grown in, it's mostly slate, so it has a nice minerality to it. Now, this is going to be the first one with the low uh, that we're doing, which has the lowest uh, level for sugars. Yeah, this one has uh, three grams per liter of sugar, and it has about, uh, for re, uh, total acidity, about uh, six grams of acid, six uh, grams of acidity. Yeah, six grams of acidity. So this one's pretty balanced. Now, you're going to get a, a lot of minerality on this one, and um, just very typical from this producer. What I want to point out is that this is the 07 vintage. Now, for the 07, it was a great year. It's a little drier in the harvest season, so they let the grapes uh, last a little longer on the vine. So it got a great, uh, better acidity, higher levels of sugar. So this wine in particular is a better balanced wine, I would say. Uh, the next one that we will be doing is the Hardenburg Riesling from South Africa. Now this one right here, it's going to have a little bit of a higher uh, sugar content. It only goes up to about 3.2 yes. grams of sugar. But you can see off the bat that you kind of get a slightly different nose, but on the palate, it's going to be slightly similar yeah, to this one, this one, this one's, um, you have 3.1, 3.2 grams of residual sugar, and you have 6.2 grams of uh, total acidity. So this one, you'd think, okay, it's going to be the same as the Cooling Galat from the Rheinhausen. But then as soon as you put it up to your nose, you don't get that minerality. You don't get that slate. You do, I mean, it's obviously a Riesling. It smells great. You get more of a fruit, more, I think the, uh, more of a, a tropical note comes through ab mm. above everything else. And then on the palate as well, totally different profile. You don't get that, that slate, that mm. like you're, licking a wet stone or something Very true. this is uh, this has more of a that dry almondy kind of note to it mm -hmm. really nice great wine um still i prefer the german rieslings this is really nice so the next one that we will be doing is the pikes riesling this is going to be from claire valley now this one right here um it comes from a cooler climate in australia but not as cool as the mosel in germany mike yeah this one actually comes from the eastern end of, uh, of Clare Valley, which is actually one of the coolest areas of the Clare Valley in general, which is a cool area in general. Uh, the soil is described as uh, like red and brown soil over uh, blue slate, uh, broken blue slate. So you do get the minerality. The nice thing about this wine is when you smell it and when you taste it, you think Germany. This has really good acidity. This has uh, what? It's uh, 7.65 grams per liter acidity. Correct. This has 4.2 grams per liter, I believe, uh, uh, residual sugar. sugar. Correct. So you know we're amping it up a little bit. Now, this in overall is not as cool as the Mosul. Uh, you're still in Australia, uh, but the 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 soil and that microclimate that it has really reflects well. And like I said, this tastes like a German Riesling. I love German Riesling, and I really love this wine right here. So the next one that we will be doing is the Kessler Riesling from Germany. The vineyards that they source this wine from is right around the Rudesheimer area. Now, if you've ever been there, um, then you know that you know it's very steep uh, uh, vineyards with a, with a slate that comes down. And, and I think what uh, the uh, August Kessler, I'm pretty sure that when they plow their vineyards, it's so steep that they need a pulley from the top of the vineyard and they use a pulley to plow their vineyards that go vertically up the, up the uh, slope there. The production of this wine is gorgeous. Uh, Kessler has been around for a long time. Um, one of the more well-known uh, winemakers in the Rudesheimer Berg area. Now the next one is the Hospitian Riesling 
from Germany. This is a Spat laser. So Spat laser, if you compare it to maybe an American Riesling, it will be a late harvest Riesling. So it's a little later in the season, so it, it has time to develop more sugar, it's a little more acidity, but it has slight uh, sweetness to it as well. This has more residual sugar than anything else we've tasted so far, but it also has a higher acidity than anything we've tasted. Uh, before and this whole lineup. This now lineup. remember, uh, a lot of people think that just because it is a sweet wine doesn't have acidity, but sometimes that can be misconstrued because really the acidity and the sweetness kind of balance each other off. So just because it is sweet and you taste the sweetness doesn't mean it doesn't have acidity and it has the body. So you really got to play around with it and really just know your palate to kind of just determine which is which. All right, thank you very much for coming by for our sixth annual or sixth weekly. Six weekly wine uh, tasting. Wine tasting on Monday. And now next week we will be doing our port wine and cigar pairing. Uh, we actually will be joined by Rudy from Sticks Cigar Lounge in Davy Dania Beach, actually. So stay tuned and hopefully we'll get to see you soon. Thank you for joining us for the blind tasting portion of the night. Uh, we're going to start off with a few wines and then we're going to go through the whole process. So we're going to go through the sights, the, the smell, and then the actual palate itself to see what uh, wines we can pick up and from what different regions. It's definitely right. It's definitely right. I'm just, I'm just yeah, saying, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't like to that. jump to conclusions right away, but... New World. Very dark rosé. Old World. But the uh, New World Pinot from where? I mean, moderate, cool climate, moderate, warm. hot climate. Warm. We're warm. saying warm. Okay, so if we're saying warm climate, uh, so we're not saying Germany, we're not saying Austria, we're going a little bit south of there. It's coming out right now, right? Because nobody's saying, well, this is Cabernet or this is Merlot. Well, so it's not, it's not Bordeaux. It's not, it's not Bordeaux. But is it Rhone? Does it have that characteristics of Rhone? You're saying Rhone? Rhone blend. Really? I'm saying a Rhone blend. A Rhone blend? Yeah, I'm saying definitely Grenache. It doesn't have Rhone. strong Syrah or Grenache like popping out, but it could be a nice round blend. Okay. Cabernet. Cabernet, man. Guys? That new oak. It's got that oh, new oak, it's got that smoky, Cabernet? it's got that fruit. Okay. Yeah. See, you know when you were a kid and you opened up the, the, the bottle of uh, vitamin C and you, and you right. smelled it? Don't ever listen to me. <laughs> Oregon, man. Oh, wow. Ammonia. Oregon. But you know what? You're close because there's a Oregon. Uh, Oregon. And, and uh, Newburgh, which is Willamette, it's yeah. just north and east. Uh, thanks for coming to El Mercado tonight for our sixth uh, weekly uh, uh, wine tasting. Hope everybody had a good time. And um, hopefully, you guys will join us for uh, Steaks Cigar Lounge next week with the Ports and Cigars tasting. Thank you.